I look at it from that perspective and I say to myself, the Nuggets aren't in trouble and I don't see them coming out of this. It's not sweet no more. Jamal Murray, all those step back shots that you were doing, all those fadeaway shots that you were doing against the Lakers, against D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves, you can't do that against Anthony Edwards. You can't do that against Nikhil Alexander. The way that is looking, I'll give it five. See what happened was. They not like us. 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 You think the bag on What is good, YouTube? This is your boy Aaron, and I am back today. I know, I know. I I, I saw the comments. We posted a video. What was it? Yesterday. And this is before game four. We recorded the video on Friday before game three versus the Timberwolves versus Nuggets game. And I was right that the Nuggets were going to win that game. I didn't think it was going to be by 27, but I knew they were going to win that game. But then game four rolls around. And yeah, I, I had the Timberwolves win that game. I thought the Timberwolves were going to be motivated. I thought the Timberwolves were going to come out firing. And I was wrong, you know, the Denver Nuggets, they, they came out and they showed why they are the reigning, defending NBA champions. And I look silly, all right? Damn it, I get it, all right, all right. I should have stood pat on my pick, Nuggets in seven. I went away with it. I said the series is pretty much over. The Timberwolves were gonna win in five. Brian predicted the Timberwolves were gonna win in six. We were wrong, okay? But you have to understand, understand. Game one and game two, the Nuggets were at home and the Timberwolves looked like the freaking 2004 Pistons, like somebody said on Twitter. They were defending like I've never seen a team defend the Denver Nuggets. They were imposing their will. They were, it was really, it was to the point where I'm like, it's not like the Nuggets aren't doing anything wrong. It's just the Temple Wolves, they just look like the more talented team. They look like the faster, more athletic, better dudes on the court. That's just what it felt like to me. It's like there, it, it just felt like there was nothing that the Nuggets could do from an adjustment standpoint that could offset what the Temple Wolves are doing. It was that bad. I was like, I. This defense is just so ferocious. The reaction time, the, the way they were able to get to their um to their different to the different areas, the way they were able to get you know react, get back to their man, it was an exceptional display of defense. Carthy Towns was playing out of his mind. Anthony Edwards, he was doing his thing. Everybody was pitching in, so I was like, okay, um, you lose two home games. Now you got to go to Minnesota. I hate to break it to everybody, but I thought, okay, Timberwolves in five. I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. The Denver Nuggets showed what a heart of a champion is all about. And they showed why they're the reigning, defending NBA champions. They showed everything that I predicted before the series started. That they're the smarter, they're the more experienced team, they have the better player, and when the fourth quarter rolls around, they're gonna out-execute, outsmart the Timberwolves. And that's what they did. It was that, it was just that simple, and game three rolled around. <laughs> Shoot, they didn't need the fourth quarter to out-execute because they were dominating from start to finish. It was it wasn't even close. Like first quarter. They were out. They were out for blood. They they were out on mission. They were playing fantastic defense on the Timberwolves. I mean, for crying out loud, like all these all these guys on the Timberwolves, they couldn't they couldn't go nowhere. I mean, everybody, for the most part, wasn't doing anything on the Timberwolves. I mean, Ant Man, I predicted he was gonna have one of those games where he wasn't gonna be able to crack twenty. Game three, he didn't do that. He he, he cracked nineteen points. So that's under 20 like I predicted, and everybody else didn't pitch in. Rio Gobert didn't pitch in, Carlton Towns didn't pitch in, you name it. Nobody really pitched in for the Timberwolves in game three. And so I was like, all right, 
Game three, I predicted that I didn't think it was gonna be by 27 points. I was like, all right, let's see what game four is all about. Let me see, let me see how the Timberwolves bounce back from that. And they were they weren't able to bounce back from that. See, Nuggets again from the start to the end. They were the better team. Jamal Murray, that first half, he was sensational. Man, oh man, I it was it was it was frustrating because I'm just like, yo, he keeps making these crazy ass step back half court shots, and I'm like, somebody stop him, and they couldn't in the first half. Now he quieted down in the second half, but it didn't matter because you had Aaron Gordon and you had. You had Justin Holiday hitting some shots. You had Christian Braun hitting some shots. You, and then you have the guy himself, the number one player in the world, and Nikola Jokic, and he was just doing whatever he wanted to on the court. And that was that. I mean, just looking at the box score, I mean, for crying out loud, like, game three, game three, where they they, they pretty much dominate the entire game. I mean, Michael Porter had 21. Aaron Gordon had 13. Nikola Jokic had 24, 14, and 9. Caldwell Pope had 12. Jamal Murray had 24. Everybody had over double digits. Everybody in, in, in the starting lineup had over double digits. You look at the bench. Justin Holiday had six. Richie Johnson had six. Christian Bond had five. I mean, bro, it is what it is. Like, it's going to be hard to beat the Nuggets when you have everybody in the starting lineup having over double digits. And then your bench also gives you some sort of contribution as well. And then you, you look at the Nuggets side. I mean, the, the Timberwolves side of things. This is game three, by the way. And Jay McDaniels, he had 10. That's what you expect from Jay McDaniels. Carl Towns at 14. Rigo Bear had six. With four rebounds. Carl Towns had five rebounds. Ant Man had 19. Mike Conley had 10. It's like you're not you're not gonna win that game with, with your best players scoring that little. The bench, Nasri had seven. The kill Alexander Walker had six. Kyle Anderson had three. It's like, bro. You're not gonna win games like that. And see, that was the thing. Game three was a punch, like from the start, it was a punch in the mouth. Like they came in there, guns are blazing, smelling blood, and, and that's that. They Timberwolves didn't know what hit them. Game four rolls around. Let's look at the box score from last night. Nicole Jokic had 35, 7, and 7. Aaron Gordon had 27 points, missed one shot. 11 for 12 from the field. You, you can't you can't let that happen. Michael Porter Jr., he had four points. Didn't really do much. Carwell Pope had, didn't really do much. He had three points. The, Jamal Murray was hitting a lot of timely shots. First half, he dominated. And that's all he really needed to do in the first half. Because he was hitting a lot of timely shots, he hit the shots they needed to. They went up, they went up 15. He hit the half court shot, which was I knew the game was over once he hit that shot. I was like, there's no way the Timberwolves gonna come back. There's no way the Nuggets were gonna blow to sleep. And then you had off the bench, you had Justin Holiday, who hit some really tough shots. You have Rich Jackson has who had six points. You have Christian Braun who had eleven points. They had what was this? A um they had an eight-man rotation. And the people off the bench, they all pitched in. That's what you need in order to win. And the Nuggets were able to do that. I want to I talk about the Timberwolves. I want to talk about Carnley Towns. Dude, you're an all-star, all-NBA caliber player. You're, you're getting paid all this money. You're the number one pick. And for whatever reason, it just seems like when you're playing the Denver Nuggets, these past two games, you forgot how to play basketball. I could have sworn you were more fundamentally sound than this. I could have sworn you had more array of moves than just this. Like, when he's getting guarded by Aaron Gordon, by Nikola Jokic, you name it, it just seems like he forgets that he, he he doesn't know how to score in the post. I'm just looking at it, I'm just like, how do you not have any moves in your repertoire, in your toolbox? And he's just getting clamped. Like, he he's trying to, he's trying to go, he's trying to drive in the paint, and it's not working. It's not working, Carl. And he was he, he was just getting cooked every freaking time. Rudy Gobert, you're the defensive player of the year, right? Nikola Jokic is bullying you. You're you're just a well, you're you're getting you're getting thrown around, bruh. You're getting pushed around. Like every time Nikola Jokic wants to get in paint, he just boom! Rudy Gobert goes, he he, he like, oh, I'm going this way. 
Like, what, what, what are we doing, bro? Like, you keep getting pushed to the side. Like, you a grown man, 7'3", and you getting pushed to the side like that. How, how does that happen? You're defense player of the year. How does that happen? You're playing against the best player in the world, just playing your position, and you just keep getting bullied like this? Are you freaking kidding me? Like, Nikola Jokic is just, uh, and you just, ah! Like, come on, man. Man up. Do something. Talk in his ear. Say something. You have to play mind games with somebody like that. You cannot just allow him to continuously push you to the side. Like, do something. Agitate him. When when he's before he even gets before he even gets to the three point line, stay attached to him. Bump him a little bit. When he doesn't have the ball, bump him a little bit. You know, impede, impede his. You know impede his walking you know what i'm saying be a bully be an annoyance don't just oh i'm gonna just go i'm gonna just go to my spot right i'm gonna just go you know at the block where you're gonna be and then i'm just you know we're just gonna be like hey no before that even happens there should be something going on you should be agitating him before he even gets to his spot Tire him out. Do something. Get in his ear. Say, oh, you ain't this. You ain't that. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to block your shot. Do something. Annoy him. Agitate him. Get in his mind. It's, it has to be a mind game when it comes to him. Because if not, he's going to he's gonna do whatever he wants. He's just going to get by, hit a shot, hit that floater, hit that turnaround jump shot. Uh, you know, and, and it'll just be cash. You have to get in his mind. Because if you don't, he's just going to continuously bully you every single time down the court. And oh, and if that doesn't work, okay, I'll be it. But you have to try something. It just seems like he's just out there playing through the motions. Like, all right, uh, I'm going to just go out there and I'm just play the event, you know, put my hands up. And... Like, no, bruh. Come on. Come on, man. And like Anthony Edwards... Had a franchise record for the most points in a, in a playoff game by a Timberwolves player. And y'all couldn't do anything for him. Mike Conley, he, he showed up. He had 15 and 9. Jay McDaniel showed up. But everybody else was a complete no show. Rudy Gobert, Carlton Towns, Nikhil Alexander Walker, Nas Reed, Kyle Anderson. Where were y'all at, man? Where were y'all at? Anthony Edwards tried to carry the team. But he can't go one on five against Denver, bro. They're too good. Y'all have to step up. And then the coaching, Mike Nori, um, Chris Finch, run some action, run some plays. Try to free up these players. Stop just, hey, y'all figure it out, go one on one, et cetera, because it's not working. Currently, every time Carlton Town gets the ball, I'm getting Julius Randle vibes. Like, I'm scared every time he touches the ball because it just seems like it's going to be a turnover. It's going to be a block. It's going to be a missed shot. It's going to be something foolish. Get him into action. Get him in the post. Run a play. Do something. The first two games, y'all got into action. Y'all got into flow of the offense. It looked very fluid. It looked like there was a plan in place. Now, game three, game four, just look discombobulated. There, there's just no sort of flow, no sort of, no sort of system in place where it's easier for the players to, to score, to get into action, to get into their spots. It just seems difficult. It just seems hard. It seems like they have to exert so much energy just to try to score a bucket. Like I'm looking at Carlton Towns. Why is he working so hard to try to score? We have to do a better job. There needs to be some sort of adjustment made game five because the stuff that I saw in the past few games was egregious. I, I'll, I'll admit I'm biased. I want the Timberwolves to win this series. I really do. I don't like the Nuggets. After the Nuggets, they messed, they messed with my Lakers. Screw the Nuggets. But I have to, I have to admit, the Nuggets, they remind me of the San Antonio Spurs with Tim Duncan, with Tony Parker, with Bonnie Ginobili. They're just a very, very smart team. They have the best coach in the NBA. They have the best player in the NBA. They have a clutch performer in Jamal Perry. They, they have all the pieces in place where you look at them, you say, 
they they deserve that championship. They 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 they're the reigning defending champions for a reason. Man. I just think the Timberwolves have everything you need in order to upset them. But it comes down to you have to be the smarter team. You have to be the team that executes better against the Nuggets, or you're going to end up losing two straight games and then eventually losing the series. So. <sighs> I know, I was wrong, I was wrong, me and Brian were wrong, we shouldn't have jumped the gun on the Denver Nuggets because we've seen it before where a team has gone down 0-2, losing two home games, and eventually winning the series, so it's my fault, I said that the Nuggets were done, they were going to lose in five, I should have stood packed to my Nuggets in seven prediction, and... Yes, I'll go back to my Nuggets prediction. I know I'm flip-flopping. I went from, oh, I thought Nuggets were going to win, to now I think the Timberwolves were going to win. Now I'm thinking the Nuggets are going to win. I know, but I have to call spade a spade, and it looks like the Nuggets are going to win again in seven. And that's that. I mean, I don't know what else I can really say on this matter besides I was wrong and that I know I look silly right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to look, stay tuned. Check out our uh, our video that's coming up. It's the it's a uh, our final review of the Drake versus Kendrick beef. Who do we think won this beef? And some other segments from our past podcast that we recorded on Friday. So check that out. We'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Just let me be. Me.